on, everybody. Y'all got to come with us. Come on, cut your hands. Cut your hands. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, everybody. Say, come. Come. Come, let us adore. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Come, let us adore Him. Kneel down before Him. Worship and adore Him. Come on, everybody, y'all know the words. Say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Come on. Woo. Emmanuel. Go back to the top. Come on, everybody, say come. Come. Come, let us adore Him. Kneel down. Kneel down before Him. Worship and adore Him. Come. chapter 4, 1 Corinthians 4 chapter, and did I hear, I was I was listening with my good ear, and I thought I heard Jasmine say that her, at her hospital there are no COVID cases in the hospital, 
see, these are the kinds of things that we spent last year praying for and praying about. And um, God is faithful, uh, most certainly. And, uh, and I'm sure that if it, that's the case in that hospital, I'm sure that's the case in many, many other hospitals. And um, we, uh, we really, I mean, he, sh he says to us in the scriptures that we are more than conquerors. And he says to us in the scriptures that we have the victory. But I don't think that we really understand exactly what all that means. But uh, I'm certainly thankful that he's showing us what it really means to be more than a conqueror and to be a life, live a life that is victorious. So we thank God for, for that wonderful, wonderful testimony and all the testimonies and all the great testimonies. Um, we're in the book of First Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We're going to be reading from verses 14 through 21. So if you have that, I would like for you to, to look at that, please. First Corinthians chapter number four, verses 14 through 21. Paul says to us in this writing, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up, as though I were not coming to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What do you want? Shall I come to you with a rod, or in love, and a spirit of gentleness? Amen. So we're going to be looking at that passage of scripture and considering the following topic. Instructor or father? Instructor or father? Now, this um, particular passage of Scripture talks to us, uh, and, and Paul makes talks to us in such a way as to kind of differentiate between those two. Paul speaks directly to that at the very beginning of the passage, where he says to, to uh, the people at the church at Corinth, he says simply this, he says, you might have 10,000 instructors, but not many fathers. And I want to just focus on that for a few minutes because I think that we need to understand uh, some of the differences between an instructor and a father, both historically and currently. School and made sure that they were properly instructed, properly taught at school. And so in the course of all of this, let us talk about for just a couple of moments what an instructor really does, even today. And so when we think about an instructor, we think about a teacher, we think about somebody that's responsible for teaching. And the church, oftentimes, when I consider where the church is today, what I see in the church is a lot of people that are very hungry for instructors. I mean, you, all you have to do is go on the internet, or you can go on the television, or you can go anywhere, and you see people that are constantly looking for the word. And, I, you know, any t especially on Sundays, when you go on any medium, what you're going to find is people that are instructing. The thing that I, I mean, I think that's good, that obviously people need to be taught. The scripture says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly what? Dividing the word of truth. That's important. That's very significant. That's valuable. But at the end of the day, let me tell you, that is something that people are always striving for. Just let me hear the word. Just give me a good word. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a, a, a involved in churches and involved in developing churches, and one of the first things everyone wants to know when they say, well, we would like you to send us a pastor. We're looking for some application for pastors. One of the first things they want to know is, can he preach? Can she preach? Right? Now, I'm all in favor of pastors that can preach, and I'm not really that fond of pastors that can't, okay, in terms of the church and the way the church is going. So I would hope that if if I, something were to happen to me and you were to say, we need a new pastor at Victory, I would hope that he or she could instruct. Nevertheless, despite that, 
The fact of the matter is the people of God seem to stop right there. In other words, if they can preach, if they can bring us the word, if they can break it down, if they can tear it apart, if they can put it back together, then that's really all the qualifications we're concerned about. And what happens is we are growing huge churches. We are growing large congregations of people that are only going for the instruction. People that are attending church, and I, I know many of them. I've been to some churches like that. Many places where people are attending church and they really love to go because they're getting very excellent instruction. And that's why Paul says there are 10,000 instructors out there. You don't have to go very far. You are right here right now today, right as you sit here, you are sitting at 418 what? Church Street. And why do they call this street Church Street. There are 16 churches on Church Street. Now, there's not but about 16,000 people in Indiana, okay? Yet and still, there are 16 churches from the end down here to the end down there on Church Street, of which we are in the 400 block. And it goes all the way up into the teens. The churches continue all the way up. And so, Paul says there's lots of teaching going on, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody needs to go to school, amen? Well, come on here. God doesn't have time for any dropouts. Everybody needs to go to school. But Paul says, listen, if I may use this expression, instructors are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's instructors. And the problem is that people have kind of gotten so accustomed to that that we as the people of God, we just have itching ears. We're always looking for somebody to scratch. Just like, you know, I look at the dogs, my dogs, you know, and it's like they love. Come on here. Come here, Inja. And he's just like, oh, 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 oh. They love you to scratch behind their ears because, and people are the same way. We have itching ears. And the best way to get those ears scratched is by somebody instructing us and giving us some information. And so Paul says, you've got 10,000 instructors. There are instructors everywhere. And th again, there's nothing wrong with that. But you have gotten so conditioned to being around instructors until you think that that's all there is in God. We think that all that God is is a series of, of lessons and do's and don'ts and Bible studies and instructions and sermons and information and breaking down the word and all of those kinds of things. When the fact of the matter is, Paul says, listen, you've got 10,000 instructors, but you don't have very many fathers. Now, I can tell you easily what the Greek word for the word father is. The Greek word for the word father is pater, P-A-T-E-R, from which we get the English word paternity and paternal and all kinds of other things like that. But the fact of the matter is, he says, you've got lots of instructors, but you don't have many fathers. Now, what is exactly a pater? What exactly is a father? Well, there's several things that a father is that an instructor can never be. First of all, a father gives an identity to the child. The first thing that a father does from the very conception of birth, from before birth, from conception, the very big first thing the father does is the father is responsible for the gender of the child. Biology lesson. You ready? Not too deep, though. Okay, just a lightweight one. All right, here's the biology lesson. Every woman has, I understand, every woman has one chromosome. Okay? She has two of them, but she only has one of them. It's, it's X. She has the X chromosome. She has two X chromosomes. Every man has an X and a Y. <laughs> Who knows why? <laughs> but it doesn't matter. A woman has XX. Man has XY. If we have a baby that ends up with XX, what do we have? Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to take a shot at that? <laughs> if a woman has XX and we have a baby that has XX, what is the gender of the baby? Okay, good. All right. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay, we're so far. And the only way that a Y can be introduced into that situation is it has to come from the father. So anytime that a father says, or a husband says, or a man says, I want you to give me a son, you might want to go on and get those chromosomes checked out, bruh. 
okay? Because she's not giving you anything, okay? The, the wise can only come from a man. And so when the baby is conceived, and if the Y chromosome beats the X chromosome to the egg, what happens? The boy comes out, at, uh, the, the child comes out as a boy, because it is an X and a Y. It is a male child, and that comes from the man. So the father is responsible from the very beginning for identifying the child. Next thing the father does is the father, generally speaking, assigns the child a name, association. The father is responsible for so many things, and I'm not taking away from any mothers here. I'm just simply trying to say that a father is responsible in many ways for the development, as particularly at the earliest ages, of the child. The mother nurtures, the mother feeds, and all that kind of thing. But the father biologically actually causes the child to develop into what kind of a child it's going to be. And so when we talk about spiritually speaking, if you are only chasing after instruction and not having a spiritual father, you are going to be full of information but you are not going to be fully developed. You are not going to have the appropriate assignment of spiritual development without having a spiritual father. I don't like that, Joel. I don't like that one too much. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. But I'm simply trying to say that the father is responsible from the very earliest stages for the child's identity and development. One time we were driving, I don't know if I told the story or not. I have so many. Okay, we were driving, and our kids were little, little kids. And they used to love to sing in the car. We used to harmonize, you know, we would just be harmonizing in the car. They were little kids, and we were driving, and it was winter time, and we were on the 220, not far from Altoona, and we hit a patch of ice. And the car skid, it didn't skid terribly, but, I mean, I don't know if there's such a thing as a good skid. Okay. <laughs> the car is skidded. So, I mean, it was a trauma no matter what. I mean, we didn't hit anything or anything. But it was just like, you know, kind of a little bit of a fishtail. And then we got back on the concrete, like the ice patch, and we passed it. And then we back went straight again. And, boy, that music got awfully quiet in the car. They were singing, oh, Jesus loves me. And we skidded a lot. And I was like, very quiet in the car. And I'll never forget it. And Melissa said, after this period of silence, and we were back, back on the road, going down the road again. Do you remember this? Yeah, I said, oh, yeah, honey, sure. <laughs> after that period of time that we got back on the road and, and the silence kind of broke and everybody was just kind of quiet because all four of us were scared, okay? Anytime the car slides on the road, it's a problem. All four of us were scared. And Melissa said, I'm so glad you're here, Dad. And it felt like, I mean, not that, you know, not that mom couldn't have gotten her out of that situation. Not, I'm, not, I'm not taking anything away. I'm simply trying to say what the child said. Because that's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's all I said. <laughs> this is what my daughter said, okay? She's a grown woman now, so you want to deal with her, you can deal with her, okay? She's 40 years old. But she said, I'm so glad you're here, Dad. And it was as though to say, I don't know what I would have done without you being here. Not that we couldn't have been, I mean, the Lord is ultimately our Heavenly Father. But the fact of the matter is, she was trying to make the analogy between my feeling secure and my Father's presence. Are you with me? And now I'm going to talk spiritual for a moment. And so how can we as God's people truly say that we are secure if we don't have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. How can we as God's people truly say that we are, have an identity in Christ? How can we truly say that we have the name, come on here, that is above all names, if we have not a relationship with our Heavenly Father? 
I know that instructors are good. I know that teachers are good. I know that just listening to the word on the radio, listening to the word on the internet, listening to the word on, on the Bible app and all that kind of stuff, that's all wonderful. But let me tell you, in spite of all that or in addition to all that, we need a relationship with our Father where we can say, like my daughter said, I'm so glad that you're here, Dad. I'm so glad that you're here, Heavenly Father. I feel secure. I feel protected. I feel valued. I feel I have worth. I feel I have energy. I feel I have victory because my father is here with me. And so you may have 10,000 instructors. When I, when I go home, I'm going to, you know, while I'm barbecuing, I'm going to sit outside. And I usually have my iPad with me and I go through all the different churches that we follow. And I look at all their services, all their video streams and stuff, and I see lots and lots of instructors, and they're good. I enjoy them. Get inspiration from them. Those are valuable things. you got to take the kids to school, right? I go, I go to school too. But when it's all said and done, at some point I'm going to need to put that iPad down and make a connection with my father. <laughs> Understanding I have thousands and thousands of teachers, instructors, but I don't have very many fathers. The fact of the matter is, from a spiritual point of view, I really only have one Heavenly Father. And that Heavenly Father gives me my identity. He made, made me who I am in Christ. He makes you who you are in Christ. He gives you His name. These are the things that we need from a Heavenly Father. And so we as God's people have a responsibility to make a connection with our Heavenly Father. Are you with me? Are you with me? A connection. A connection with our Heavenly Father. We, at some point, and even though, again, I'm not knocking any of it, but at some point, we've got to turn the preachers off and connect with our Father. You know, the preachers, will, they'll, they'll always be there. You know, you, you don't worry. And especially you know, if it's on Facebook, it just goes down a little bit further, but you can find it, okay? You worried about finding it? I don't know. I want to get last week's message. Well, just keep on scrolling. <laughs> You'll get to it. But let me tell you, I don't want to miss one day. Like Melissa said, listen, I'm so glad I'm in the presence of my God. I'm so glad you're with me. I'm so glad. I don't know what I would have done to make it through the last year and a half if God wasn't with me. Those of us that have been, all of us have been through the pandemic, and some were affected in different ways. Some actually had it in this very room. But I'm telling you, if it wasn't for our Heavenly Father, where would we be? Where would we be? Where would we be? And so all the instructors are fine, but we need to make a connection with our Father. God bless you. <laughs> Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And as I look out over the congregation today, I, I am certain, I am absolutely certain that there are some here today that need to make a connection with their Heavenly Father, with our Heavenly Father. There are some here today that need to make a connection with our Heavenly Father. And I'm saying, if that is you, I invite you to stand right where you're sitting. You don't have to do a big thing. You know, and, I, and it doesn't matter. Well, I've been saved for a long time. It doesn't make any difference. I have strayed. I've gotten so focused on all the instructors. I have not really focused on my father. And so I'm saying today, if that's that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I'm going to, as it were, I'm going to open up the opportunity for us to connect or reconnect in some cases with our Heavenly Father. This is why we're here. We are in the house of God because we want to be connected to God. We come to his house for this very reason. Yeah, I know that there is instruction here, but we're really here to connect with God. Uh, we're really here to connect with God. I, I, and I understand, you're always going to have good teaching. You're always going to have that. But we are here to connect with God. And so anybody else, I invite you to stand right where you're sitting. We're, we're going to pray, and we're going to ask God to move in a new way. Even when we leave this place, we're going to really connect with God. This week, this month, this day, we're going to not forget about our original connection. We need a father. We need our father. We need the father of all. 
ready to pray? Those that are standing, I, I ask you to lift your hands and talk to the Lord for yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for moving in each one of these lives. Lord, you see the people of God that are standing in this house. We, Father, we thank you for moving, Lord, in every circumstance, every family, every life, every individual, in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that you are here for us. Lord, we have heard the instruction, but the instruction points us to you, and that's what it's supposed to do. The instruction directs us into the very presence and power oh yes, into the very presence and power of God. We thank you, Lord, even now for moving supernaturally in your lives of your children. Lord, Lord, even at those times when we're distracted and we're focusing on a thousand other things, we're focusing on so many other things. We're focusing on hearing another word. We're focusing on singing another song. We're focusing on preaching another message. Father God, remind us that, Lord, it is your presence. It is your glory. It is your power. It is connection with you that is the most important thing we can ever do. It is connection with you that's more important than all the other things because look, heaven and earth shall pass away, but our connection with you is going to be eternal. And Father God, I thank you for moving by your spirit in the lives of your children, in the lives of your children, in the lives of your children. Now those that are standing, just tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. We're, 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 we're making some steps in faith. That's right. 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 Now, there are other needs in this place. At, at this hour, there are other needs in this place. And so if you have a need, uh, we, I know we prayed about this father connection first, but there are other needs. If there's healing, if there's something you need in your home, something specific that you can identify, now you stand. If there's something that you want God to do in, in your life, in your family, you stand in the name of Jesus. And we're going to pray a general prayer. And as I pray, I want everybody that stands to talk to God for yourself. I want everybody that stands today, I want you to say something to your father. Say something to God because despite the fact that he is our heavenly father, he's also our provider. He's also our healer. He's also our deliverer. He's also our banker. He's our doctor. He's our lawyer. He's all of those things. And so even now, I'm going to pray a general prayer and you ask specifically for what it is you need for him to do in your life. And, and we're going to expect God to do some great things in our lives in Jesus' name. Let's pray to together. Father, and right now, Lord, you see all the people that stand in your house today. In Jesus' name, there are specific items, there are issues, there are concerns on the hearts of your children. And Father, I thank you for moving, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, for Lord Jesus blessing every one of your children, causing us to rise above every circumstance. I take authority in the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. I thank you, God, for moving by your spirit in the lives of your people. In Jesus' name, I don't know what every individual needs, but Lord, you do. You do, and I thank you for meeting. I thank you for touching. Even in the midnight hour, touching physical bodies, Lord, touching emotions, Lord Jesus, touching, Lord Jesus, mental capacities in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for causing your children to rise above where we are and take us to a new place in the spirit, in the, in the spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Who you are. And I'm loved by you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. How many of you know that God is a good, good father? The best, the best, the best, the best. Um, all we can do is try to emulate him. Like Paul said to the church there, he said, imitate me. He's talking about the fact that you want to imitate your father. Imitate your father. It's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. Amen. So we're going to get ready for offering. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord through giving. Um, most of you know that we are touchless and so we're going to uh, we're going to give uh, 
through our various devices. But if you happen to have an offering that you brought with you or you're not connected to our devices, um, we're gonna, after we pray, we're going to ask you to lift your hands and the ushers will come around and collect from your seat so you don't have to get up. But um, let's pray right now. Father, we do thank you. We praise you for this time, uh, Lord, and this opportunity to give. We pray your blessings upon every gift and every giver. We thank you for multiplying the seed and the fruit. Give back to your children 30, 60, 100 fold in Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say. Right. If you'd like to give electronically to Victory, you can do so in a number of ways. From your web browser on your computer, tablet, or phone, use the URL easytithe.com forward slash VCA. This will take you directly to our Easy Tithe giving portal. Choose the Give Now tab to enter the fund you'd like to contribute to and plug in the amount. You can also access the same portal by texting. Text the word GIVE to area code 724-204-1995. As an alternative, you can download the dedicated Easy Tithe app on either the iOS or Android platform. You can also use Cash App. Here is our info, dollar sign Victory PJ. Lastly, you can access our Easy Tithe giving portal through our website, www.myvictory.org. We're back in our sanctuary at 418 Church Street in Indiana again, as well as continuing to offer virtual victory online. We'll be following CDC guidelines for safety protocols. You can stay in touch with the Victory electronically in a number of ways. Visit our website, myvictory.org. There you can find out more about us and check out our blog. Also follow us on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Download our app for your mobile device on either the Android or iOS platforms. There you can view the latest sermons, check out music and ministries, post a prayer request, or visit our chat room. We hope you've had an excellent worship experience today. Have a great week, and in all you do, we pray that you walk in the victory God has designated for you. Be blessed, and we'll see you next week, online or in person.